Today we will learn what is a motion diagram, how do you see position, velocity, and acceleration on a motion diagram, and how can you determine if an object is not moving? Let's get started. Let's start out by talking about motion diagrams. So they're also known as dot diagrams and they have dots along a number line that represent the object's position after a given amount of time. So oftentimes you will see dots that are located along a line that may or may not have dashes through it. Sometimes you'll see like ticker tape has dashes, dot diagrams usually use dots. It's just the preference and sometimes it's the setting in which you're given a motion diagram. So in this case here, you're gonna get two pieces of information. The first one is looking at that horizontal line to see the location of the dot and that'll give you its position. The other thing that you're gonna get is the time interval, which is denoted by the number of dots that are present along the number line. Speaking of the time interval, usually it's one second per dot. However, you would know to use something else if it's specified in the beginning of the problem. In this case here, we can see in our diagram, we go zero seconds, one seconds, two seconds, three seconds. So this is a one second interval, which is pretty standard. Now notice at zero seconds, my position, I'm gonna look at the number line, it's zero meters. At one second, I'm located at two meters, two seconds, four meters, three seconds, six meters. So what a motion diagram gives you on the most straightforward level is it tells you position and time. Now, what if the object is not moving? If it's not moving, we're going to say that it stays at that same position. But what do you do if the spot for the dot is already taken? Well, you stack them. So in this case here, we have at zero seconds, the object is at zero meters. But at one second, it's also at zero meters. I'm going to stack it. At two seconds, still at zero meters, I'm gonna stack again. And if you choose, it's my personal preference to annotate the time, but feel free to just leave the dots. And then at three seconds, we can see the object started to move, it went to six meters. And then you would continue with your dot diagram or your motion diagram like normal. Now that we've talked about how to read a motion diagram for the direct information it gives you, let's apply it. First of all, let's quickly review the equation for velocity. Velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. Now, if you need a review of velocity or you feel so-so about it, you can click the button in the upper right-hand corner, and I do have a full video on just talking about velocity. Check it out. So since motion diagrams provide us with position and time data, we can calculate the displacement between each pair of dots to determine the object's velocity. This is gonna be that scenario that I talked about where you may wanna use displacement divided by delta t. I'm gonna to try to use that new version of the equation. My displacement is gonna be the final position minus initial divided by the final time and the initial time. And I'm gonna look at the first two dots. So my final is gonna be the information that happened later and my initial is at the start. So I have two meters minus zero meters divided by one second minus zero seconds and two divided by one is gonna give me a velocity of positive two meters per second. So you can see how I can take that position time data to calculate velocity. Now let's look at it on a larger scale. When the displacement between each pair of objects stays the same, or I like to say they're equally spaced, then the object will have a constant velocity. So going back to our original example that you can see down below, what we're gonna do is calculate the velocity. So notice that in between every single two points, the displacement is two meters. Zero to two meters is a two meter difference. Two to four meters is a two meter difference. And four to six is a two meter difference. Also notice that if each dot represents a time interval of one second has passed, then our delta T is one second. One minus zero is one. Two minus one is one. Three minus two is one. So because of this, when I go to calculate velocity, I'm gonna get the velocity is two meters per second for every point on this motion diagram. Now you can label the velocity on the motion diagram itself. Remember that velocity is a vector. So we can add a vector arrow onto each of the dots to denote their velocities. Now I can't tell you what the velocity is at three seconds. If I were to predict it, I would say it's gonna to continue to be constant, but you would need a new final data to calculate that point. 
So now that we know that we can calculate velocity, that opens up a new opportunity. We can calculate acceleration because acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by time. And we know that motion isn't always constant. Now, if you want to learn more about acceleration, again, I have a really awesome video that you can click on in the top right corner to refresh your memory. But if you're ready, let's hop right in. We can use motion diagrams to calculate the change in an object's motion over time. In order to do this, there's three steps. The first thing is to calculate each dot's displacement, which is what we did earlier. Your second step is to calculate each dot's velocity. Again, we can denote that on our diagram. And then the final step is to calculate the acceleration between the dots. Let's go ahead and look at two examples. The first example is gonna be a situation where speeding up. This happens when the change in velocity leads to an increase. So V final is gonna be greater than V initial. So in this case here, we can see our motion diagram and this motion looks different. It's not constant because the dots are not equally spaced apart. We can see that there's a growing base between each of the dots over time. Now let's go ahead and calculate. From zero to two meters divided by one second is gonna give us an initial velocity of two meters per second. But then from one second to two seconds, we see six minus two will give us four and there's a one second change. So divided by one is four itself. Now we can use those two velocities to calculate the acceleration of the object. So I'm gonna go ahead and use V1 as my V final and V naught as my V initial. I'm gonna do four minus two divided by one minus zero. And that gives me two divided by one. Now be careful with those units. We're gonna change that. <clears throat> so we get our acceleration is equal to positive two meters per second squared. Remember acceleration is also a vector. I usually denote it either above or below the diagram. Now, what does this mean? It means that the velocity is changing plus two meters per second each second. If I follow this trend, that means that V2 should be four plus two, which is six meters per second. And that is exactly what we have here. Let's go ahead and look at an example of slowing down. The difference with slowing down is an object is slowing down when the final velocity or the magnitude of the final velocity is less than the magnitude of the initial velocity. So in this case here, notice that we can tell this is not constant motion. There's definitely acceleration because the dots are not equally spaced apart. Notice also that they start farther apart and they get closer together. So in this case, we're looking at an object that is slowing down. Now we can see that our initial velocity is six meters per second because six divided by one is six. And from one to two seconds, we can see V1 is four meters per second. Now we can take those two velocities to calculate an acceleration. So in this case here, I would do four meters per second minus six meters per second divided by one second minus zero seconds. Notice that this is gonna produce a negative result because in this case, V final is less than V initial. So we're gonna get that our acceleration is equal to negative two meters per second squared. Now, what does this mean physically that's taking place here? It means that the velocity is changing by negative two meters per second each second. So if we follow this pattern, we have six, four, and four minus two, this should give us a V2 of two meters per second. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that this helps you. Remember that the growth is found in the journey rather than in the solution. So get out there and try some practice physics problems. And I'll see you in the next video.